Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. Welcome and welcome back. I'm here today to do an M Scrapbusters challenge. Yeah, it's my first video for a while, so yeah, I've let Melina do all the thinking. <laughs> this is my interpretation of Melina's Scrapbuster. Uh, right, so she's made these cute little pockets this week. Now these are made from magazine pages. Yeah, the designed well, you can stick them down to your page, so no need to decorate back. If you do decide you want to have them as a free floating pocket, you can just pop something on back so you can journal on it. But yeah, you'd never know that were made from a magazine page. My magazine happens to be Christmassy. <laughs> it's just the first one I grabbed. Yeah, and it's donkey's years old. So let's show you how we make them. I've got one part made here and I'll... I made a boo-boo on that, so I'll show you in a while how to put the boo-boo right, if you make the boo-boo. Right, starters. Melina used a junk mail magazine that came through. Uh, I've just got any old magazine that I found. This is a Prima Christmas special, yeah? So, grab your paper. What I did for those, I'll show you how I made that size. Uh, the size is not important. You will get whatever size you get, depending on whatever size piece of paper you start off with. I'm just going to tear that. It's, it's going to be on the back. We won't see it. I'll move the main magazine for now. Right. So, to make the pocket, it couldn't be simpler. I've made mine slightly different to Melina's, only because... These are kind of pockets I do make often, and this is how I make them. And if I try and do it Melina's way, I'll probably forget halfway through, and I will end up making them my way. So, that's my half magazine page. Fold that over, fold that over. I'm going to grab my glue stick. I'm using that just to make sure I don't get glue where I don't want it. Now, I'm going to pop some glue down that edge. And down that edge so first I'll just do that just down the edge not right over you don't need to and then that edge there smidgen at the top that'll help seal the top then fold that in Melina's method she just cut things before doing any gluing I do a bit of gluing then a bit of cutting you end up with the same result it doesn't matter which way you use right then just fold the bottom up as far as you want then just to get rid of that bulk grab the scissors just going to cut from the crease there and same again there now I'm going to have that folded up there to be honest this magazine page is quite thin so I don't need to cut more off but if you're using a page that's any thicker just fold that back and cut that piece off so let me just put I'll put a line with my pen on crease just to show you what I'm cutting. Well, that's a nice big purple line. Yeah, so that's my crease. And I want to cut just inside it. So we've not got any bulk at the bottom. Can you see? Just like that. Don't matter how neat it is, because it's gonna be covered up. I'm gonna cover it up with that flap. It doesn't even matter that that's not neat because that's going to be on the back. Then I'm just going to grab my glue stick and do that edge. Not right up to there because we don't want to stick the bottom together if we've been a bit wonky we are cutting. And there we have a little pocket. So that's getting rid of some old magazine pages, book pages, whatever you've got hanging about. Then the scrap part comes in now and I've literally fished in my card bin it's a good job I have a bin separate for all my card and paper because I have had a tub of scraps on my desk long thin strips forever and I was sick of seeing them and I literally put them in the bin yesterday I then saw Melina's video and I fished them all back out <laughs> but most of them they're just off cuts, you know, when you're cutting your journal pages down to size. That's why I've got such a lot of thick, thin ones. And I use them to pack uh, 
with tickets and things like that in my Etsy shop. Anyway, enough waffling about where my scraps came from. Right, I'll show you my prototype again here. Now this one, I started putting my papers on at the bottom. I don't really think it makes much difference whether you start bottom or top. Melina started top. I meant to do it same as Melina's, I just did it wrong way around. So <laughs> that was mistake number one. So let's stick some papers on. I've got my glue book here. I'm using my favourite Elmer's glue stick. And I think I'm going to... I might alternate some... Just rip a bit. Now, if you don't have any scraps, any thin strips, get some of your card scraps and just cut them into thin strips. I think most of us who make junk journals probably do have some thin strips, don't we? Right, and I've just put that on and I've lined it up with bottom. Yeah, there we go. What next? I should have put my scraps at the side, really, so I can keep my glue book where it is. Yeah, let's do a quick swap. Can we see? We can. I'm a bit rusty with this video in Malarca. Right, what next? I think I'm going to make this one a neutrally one. Oh, I like that. That's got a nice stain on it. Oh, it's a bit more checked though, isn't it? Let's have some that's not checked. Let's have a bit of plain. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. So I'm just going to glue the back. No inking of the edges. We'll do that after if we want the edges inked. Oh, it all depends on what you're going for, doesn't it? And I'm sneakily cheekily using that uh, line on the check one just to line it up ish. Because I know some of my strips are wider at one end than other. Then I'm going to use that one. And this is a label backing I'm gluing down onto because I know that I'll be able to peel it off. Like that little stained one. There we go. And I don't worry if I get glue where I don't want it either when I use my Elmer's because it dries clear. Right, I've got some brown paper there. I'm going to use a bit of that. I am going to tear the top, tear it in half because I'm going to cover the teared bit up with my last strip because I can't be bothered to get paper trimmer for one piece. Yeah. I think I'll have it that way, the dull way. Mind you, there's more ridges that way. Oh, have it. Just make your mind up, stick it on. Doesn't really matter, does it? Wee. So, yeah, I am feeling much better now, those of you who've seen my community post. Yeah, I had a cyst. No more information needed. It got infected. They get nasty. Stayed out of hospital by the skin of my teeth, which I'm so glad about due to my fabulous, amazing GP and all nurses. They were so brilliant with me. So, yeah, that's that. End of. <laughs> but thank you for all your lovely messages. I didn't reply to them all because this was on my back. It was... <laughs> oh, it was terrible. Uh, I just... I couldn't move my arms right well. It hurt. So, I didn't move them. I was very lazy and had lots of rest, which is what apparently I need to prevent things like that in the future. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm here now. I think I'm, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put that bit at top that's got some bit of flor floralness. I, you may notice I really can't speak yet. Very out of practice doing my videos. That's why I thought a nice, easy way back in would be to do one of Melina's. It's not Melina's current one, this, either. She has done one before, and I've sort of missed that out. But I will catch up on that. One of the days when I've got no inspiration whatsoever, <laughs> I'll go back and do Melina's. Right, I'm just peeling that off. Just so I can see. That's nicely lined up. So... Next thing, get your scissors and we're just going to cut all those off. Yeah, 
I butt my scissors up against there and cut. It does cut a lot better if you leave it to dry. But, yeah, I'm doing a video, I can't be bothered to pause it and let things dry. Plus, I'm a very impatient person. Yeah, thank you as well to everyone who's carried on watching my older videos. Uh, I'm, I'm amazed how many views I were getting on my videos, so thank you very much. That kept the uh, pennies coming in from the advertising fees from YouTube. And thank you to all the people who bought me coffees. Very much appreciated. I'm struggling here. Did I go wrong again? Yeah, right, look. I struggled at the end. And I struggled at the end on my last one. And I've cut... Oh, I've cut my pocket just at the end. Look, I did it there. So the reason I left that one as it is, is because I'm just going to show you how to repair it. I'm just going to grab a little piece of a magazine page. You know, one of these that I cut off. Cut that a bit straight. And I'm just going to tuck it under there. Yeah, that will tuck because my edges weren't quite glued. I'm just going to sneak a little bit of art glitter glue in there. So if at first you don't succeed, this is not one of them cases where you can pretend you did because your pocket will fall apart. And then I'm just going to snip that off. So I've just, re I've just reinforced that bit where I cut it with another piece of paper. You could use any paper. I thought I'd use the magazine paper because it is kind of, it's kind of tough, isn't it, magazine paper? That didn't want to glue down though. Oh, there's two pieces of paper, that's why. Oh, cut that off. <laughs> Don't have a repeat. Now, can you see? My pocket's all repaired. And I'll also come in now and just glue that down. Yeah. But you'll find when you've cut these off, you might have a few bits that haven't stuck brilliantly. So just poke in with a fine tip glue bottle. And that's that. I hope you followed that. That was me putting right my mistakes. And I'm going to have to do it again on this one. So if you didn't catch it first time, here it is again. Bit of paper. Just going to put some glue there between the front of the magazine and my little strips that I've stuck on. Uh, tuck that bit of... Tuck it in that way, that's better. Tuck that in there. Then I'm going to glue that down. It's just a little repair we've made. Maybe if you can see better than me, you won't cut the side of your pocket up in the first place. And you won't have to make repairs. You can see how I've gone in on that. But you won't notice that in a second when I've just put a bit of ink on. There you go. You just don't notice it's there then. Right. So, it's like a little mass make now, as Melina said. I'm doing a couple at once. So, I'm going to ink all the way around the edges. I'm using my... Yeah, I am, that one. Distress Oxide, because I like it. Walnut stain. So I may as well do two at once, haven't I? I always link Melina's videos in my description. And you can usually find them if you click on the hashtag M Scrapbusters. Right, now because these are raised, this is how Melina's ink the edges and it's a brilliant idea. Just like that. Just like that. There you go, I like that. And I'm going to do the same on here. A bit more difficult when your paper's thin, but you can still do it. That saves so much time and trouble. Fabulous idea, that Melina. 
there you go just gives that a little bit of definition to all your little strips right now you could leave those there if you were just mass making these and you didn't know what project you were going to put them in you could just leave it there if you look at this one i just i've not gone to town decorating i've done a little bit of spritzing of some ink i bought one of these a distress spray stain bundled sage tim Holtz. it were about seven pound i'll be quite honest with you i don't think i'll buy any more because i don't see any difference between that and a refill mix with water i really don't so i don't i can't see me wanting to use that much bundled sage i'll get through all this so in future i will stick to buying myself a refill and mixing my own color with some water yes i know it will go moldy if you leave it too long that is why i mix them up in teeny tiny little bottles a teeny tiny bit at a time or mix it with some alcohol alcohol will kill your germs right that's enough moaning about Tim Holtz spray stains. Yeah, if you're going to be doing mixed media and all sorts of gummings and using loads, go for them. Personally, don't. So I think it was just a bit of a waste of money for me. It were a not really needed kind of thing. But, you know, when you're bored and you can't craft and you end up buying things you don't need. Yeah. I've just noticed this is not quite straight enough. There you go happy now right if you look at the top there the notch uh yeah i've used one of my tab punches let me grab one now, again this was melina's idea and she uses this tab punch and it looks fabulous i thought because i've got it i've got this other one it's the green we are memory keepers one and i thought because i've got it i'll try that and see what it looks like and i like it so yeah but i'm going to use the other one on one of these because this looks good too uh, i'm going to use it on this one now as you notice i nearly punched the bottom then don't punch the bottom punch the top works much better so Gonna eyeball when it's in middle. Eyeball, eyeball. Ooh, a lot of layers to go through. It's not an happy bunny. I don't think it's gonna want to punch. Ooh, missus, put it down on the desk. Use all your strength. I didn't think I'm gonna stand up for this. Mmm, no. That's too many layers from our punch. It doesn't like it. You know, because I've put a really thick piece of cardstock on top. It just really don't want to do it. So let me try doing it front and not back. See if that'll work. Can I get it in? Yeah, I can if I do it this way. Then it's going through less layers. Will it go in? Oh, it's not going to go in. It's not going to go in. So that's not going to happen on that one. So be wary of that. That is a very thick piece of cardstock. That is from one of those pads in UK from the range. It's really, it's more like card than paper. I'm going to grab a circle punch. I hope you can still hear me because I've turned around and I'm rummaging for a circle punch. That's no circle punch, is it? Can you tell I forgot where everything is? I've only been out at craft room a week and a half and I just don't know where things are. Right. These are very chompy punches, these EK success ones. I think this will do it. So, yeah, look at that. Oh, like butter, but it was a circle, so it was, wasn't was an intricate shape. I'm going to try this one. Yeah, not wrong with my punch. That's scrapbook paper as well but that's a i think that were a graphic 45 not quite as thick also it's probably would be easier if i waited for glue to dry yeah that'd be a good idea let's see if this works has my punch broke this i think my punch is broke it's not lining up at that side. I wonder if I've dropped it. Yeah, can you? Let me try it on a piece of paper. 
Maybe I'm just abusing my punch too much. Yeah, it works on that. I'm really sad now. I mean, I could pause and <laughs> sort it out, but I just I really want to punch through this. Go on, punched. Go for it. Let me try it other way. So if the cut inside is going through the cardstock, see if that makes any difference. No. Right, I've either broke my punch or it really didn't want it normally goes through two sheets of cardstock, so my punch is broke. Oh, I'm really sad about that. See, maybe it wants sharp, I don't know. I'll still show up moaning about my punch. Try the other one, see if I can break that one. <laughs> Let's see if we can break this matching punch. Right, make sure I get in far enough down to cover up where the other one started to punch. Perfect, yeah. My punch is uh, on its last legs or it's past being on its last legs and its last leg has collapsed. Yeah, poor punch. But, yeah, I'll stop moaning about my punch now. Things could be worse. <laughs> oh, right, let's ink this. So that was a right big tangent I waffled off on, weren't it? Right, if you're worried about seeing that on your journal, just open it up and just ink that bit as well. There we go. We've got a few marks there where other punch tried to punch, but I'm just going to ink them. I quite like them. They look like a feature of the card. Then that one. I keep wanting to automatically go and ink the back, but this is going to be something that's glued down. So no need to. Right. Shall we decorate these? Let's move that out of the way now. Right. So I've done one with a butterfly. I don't seem to be able to do any crafting lately without sticking a butterfly on it, so I'm not even going to try to. I'm quite happy sticking butterflies and everything I own. And I'm going to decorate these in a very similar fashion. So I've got this sheet of labels. I need to find out who this is from. I really don't know. I remember when I printed it, it's, it's a US lady because it was letter size. And I forgot to change the settings on my printer and it's missed the bottom and the top off because I obviously print in A4, but as far as who it is, I really don't know at the minute. I will try and put it in the description if I can remember. Right, I'm just going to cut a couple of random numbers out. I think I like that 0800, or it could be 800, it could be either I suppose. Depends which way up you have it, doesn't it? So we've got that one, and I like that one. I also like that one. Oh, we've got a darker one here. I'm going to go for that one. In fact, now I'm going to go for 31. Can you tell I, I'm just so indecisive? I'm so rusty with crafting, filming, but I thought I'd just get back into it, woman. Just do it. There's only one way you're going to get better again, isn't it? Doing it. You're not going to get better thinking about making a video or thinking about doing some crafting. Right. I might still splatter some paint on. Wee, that's that. But you could even do the decorating ma in mass make style, couldn't you? Yeah, let's do a bit of splattering. Right, I've got this box. This is what I do my splattering with. Just gonna check my light. Yeah, you can still see what I'm up to. I don't want you to miss any of this scintillating work that's occurring. Uh, I just use it's a plastic storage box, and I've put a bit of card in the bottom because that will at some point be a background. And I'm doing the splattering like this. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I just can't see what difference 
<laughs> this is between mixing a bit of ink and water. I really can't. Sorry, Tim. I love your stuff. You know I love you. I ain't gone off you. I just really not getting these. But maybe I'm not using them in the way they're supposed to be used. Like that. Oh, I've gone a bit mad now. Right, then I'm going to have to dry these with heat gun. There we go. If I had some <laughs> kitchen roll, I'd dab it off a bit so it'd dry quicker. But guess what? I ran out in kitchen and then I nicked my craft room kitchen roll. So it's gone. And I don't have a dry baby wipe because I haven't been in here using baby wipes. You can see it's curling up, but we'll sort that out. My prototype curled, but it uncurled. Just a bit of manipulation and it'll uncurl itself. There we go. The other thing I splattered on, I used a little bit of sparkle. Now again, I don't buy sparkly sprays because I'm too tight fisted. I like to use cheapo when I can, then I can splash out on things that I really can't find a cheap version of. Do you know what I mean? One last dot dry. Ooh, that'll do. Right, this is what I use and I've had this bottle for years and I'm quite confident it will last for years more. It's called Iridescent Medium and it's by Winsor & Newton. It's what artists use to mix in any kind of paint or medium to make it pearlescent. Yeah, so don't buy everything you've got again in the pearlescent version. Just get some of this. But I use it on its own as well. And all I'm going to do is dip a brush in. Now this might get a bit messy. Dip my brush in, get some on it. And I'm going to splatter with this. Need to be a bit nearer with this. I could have done with a different brush. This is the only one that came to hand and it's a little bit thin. You can probably see it on the cream better. Just wang it, dab it, chuck it. Whee. Get it on there. I can hear it hitting the paper. And then it will be a little bit sparkly when the light catches it. Just brings a little bit of summer more interest into my dull brown green crafting. And these bottles do last forever and I think that cost me about a fiver. But I literally must have had that three or four years. I'm not joking. There we go. So I shall put my lid back on. I'm just going to daub my finger on there to dry it. Here we go. And that's that done. Right, if you've ever had one of those Wink of Stella pens, I made my own Wink of Stella pen. If you don't know what that is, it's a pen and you brush it on and it makes things look a little bit sparkly. Well, I just put iridescent medium like this into this pen, into a water brush pen. That needs filling up. You do have to shake this stuff as well because I think it's some kind of mica in it. It does settle to the bottom. Anyway, that's more rambling and waffling. Let's dry it. So yeah, I used to make all my own sprays, bit of acrylic paint, bit of water, bit of iridescent medium and I would keep spraying on loads of bits of paper until it had all gone so there weren't really any issue of storing it and then I'd put them into my journals. I don't seem to mass make journals like I used to because I'm doing YouTube and supplies on Etsy. Right, so I'm going to take those out. Yes, they're curly, but they're going to come uncurly in a minute. I had a lady ask a question today about, um, is there anything I can suggest? Because she can't get those rub-on waxes that you might have seen me use before where she lives. and yeah you can make your own with beeswax hair wax and mica powder or pigment powder or even eyeshadow 
right there we go they're back straight we may have to put a little bit of glue here you know this was quite a big overlap so i'm just putting a line of my art glitter that one seems to be stuck pretty well right let's crack on with some more decorating i'm not going to spend all day decorating these wow i am in waffle mode aren't i waffle waffle which one we're going where oh, i can't decide do, 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 do. i think that one looks better there and that one there but i'm going to put that on that side It's like a little decorating formula, really, this, isn't it? Because I'm not capable of thinking for myself at the moment. <laughs> Curl that a bit more. There we go. And I'm going to grab my butterflies, which I do have out somewhere. Butterflies. Mm, yeah, where are they now? Oh, Lord. I know I've got some bits of fabric there. Here we've got butterflies. I'm all at sixes and sevens and eights, nines and tens as well, I think. Right, so I just want to pick a couple of butterflies that go nice with those. Um, I did cut a load of those out. I did do a fussy cut sheet of butterflies that you can find on me, buy me a coffee. And then I've put them somewhere and I don't know where I've put them so I'm back to using my book page butterflies because I can't find my own oh I like that yellow oh I think that looks nice on those greens doesn't it yes very much so oh that's oh that's bigger it's gonna be one of those two don't know which one yet and I think he wants one that wants one with a bit of colour in oh what about that far too big but I love it is that similar but smaller? Oh yeah, I like that one. I like the pink there. It picks out that bit of pink from there, doesn't it? And which one of those is it going to be? Oh, I'm going to go, go for a bright one, woman. Go for it. Right. And then all I've done is I've I decided I wanted my butterfly overlapping the number a little bit. I liked that look for a change. Just going to ink around these edges a little bit. Not too much, just to get rid of any white that were there when, yeah, when I cut them out. And I'm going to put this, these on with glue stick because they're just paper. They're from book pages. These, had they been carded, I'd probably use my art glitter. That's you. We like you. You're pretty. We'll just have you overlapping the zeros a bit. So, there we go. And then we'll put this one on. Yeah, I like the splatter idea. I've noticed Melina does splatters on lots of things. They look really good. I do have the odd sprays I've had for years, but yeah, I don't can't see me buying any more unless there's some magic technique you can do with them that makes me go wow, I need them. Right, I've got this, just some bits of fabric, and I'm wondering if that. Oh, I think if I ink that up a bit, that's going to go really nice with butterfly and that top into it. Oh, that bit, that bit's good. Yeah. Oh, I've got paper clips everywhere. All my scissors are magnetised. But I've got a feeling I moaned about that on the last video. <laughs> that might be a bit long. And on this one, what shall I have? What have we got? What's that? No, I don't think it's a lacy design, that is it. It might just end up being a bit more hessian on that. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of hessian on that one, I think. 
I'm just going to cut that fabric a little bit shorter. I don't think I need to ink it. I like the colours now. Now I've got more of the peach and just a little bit of the pink. Yeah. Then I just need to choose a couple of words off my word sheet that I've got. I can tell you does the word sheet because my it's eclectic eggplant. I love these words. I've printed these out a couple of times. Think big and courage I think I'm going to use. And of course I'm going to put think big on the big butterfly. Yeah, my little sayings really are that obvious. What am I thinking behind which to use, should I say? I used to spend ages cutting things out like this out. Really perfect. Ah, oh, it's so much more satisfying just getting it done a bit quicker. And I like the lack of perfection these days. Any white bits that are showing I'm going to get rid of with my ink. I don't know if I'm going to go stay strong or courage. I can't decide. So we'll ink think big up because we know we want that one. Uh, I am just going to glue my fabric down with art glitter. It dries clear. If it don't, it just looks like the fabric's aged, so really don't bother me. Well, it, we know it dries clear, but sometimes, you know, if you, you've got something that's inked or you put a lot on, it can change the colour of fabric. You can see it, but that is not a problem for me. Right, that's my bit of fabric. And then this is my little sentiment. I'm really sad about my punch. <laughs> no, stay strong. Stay strong, don't cry. Yeah, we'll put stay strong on. Yeah, the world didn't end. Your punch has just gone a bit dodgy. Right, I'm going to glue this on as well with art glitter. I'm going to try and stick mainly under where the word's going to be this time though because it's very open weave this. I don't want to see giant big blobs of glue everywhere. I'll put plenty on because Hessian really does soak burlap. I always call this Hessian and people ask what Hessian is. I think that's just the difference between UK and uh, US and I've no idea what the, you call it in Australia and other countries. Europe, Canada. I'm not going to name every country in the world. <laughs> yeah, we always called it Hessian at school. Right, so that's that, and that's that. So I'm going to bring my other one back in. I could make more, but I'm very waffly and slow to craft today. So I'm going to leave it at that. And I really hope you enjoyed that. So it is nice to be back. Yeah, you never know, I might go mad and start making videos every day. No, no, I'm not. No, I don't think I'm ready for that just yet. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Thank you again to everyone who has supported me, even while I've not been here. It has been so, so much appreciated. And thank you. I'll see you next time. Bye.